Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about rain and it's actually raining right now. It is hammering it down and I feel like this is a weather scenario which probably affects a lot of you guys who are watching, especially if you live in Europe. We are very much used to the rain. And over the years I've had a lot of questions and queries from you guys about how to style yourselves in the wet weather um, and also for brand recommendations for things like raincoats, boots, umbrellas, all those kind of rainy day essentials. So that's basically what today's video is gonna be about. I'm gonna give you guys some brand recommendations. I'm gonna show you guys my own wet weather gear and I'm gonna show you some rainy day outfits as well. Right, I'm going to start off with what I would deem as the most valuable piece in your wet weather wardrobe and that is the raincoat. And the reason I think that this is the most important thing and I think it's quite obvious I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's because it's the piece which is going to cover the rest of your outfit. So essentially it doesn't really matter what you wear underneath. And I'm not gonna cover anything like bottoms or jumpers or that kind of thing because so long as you've got a good raincoat, you can wear whatever the heck you want underneath. Right, so when it comes to raincoats, there's a few kind of terms that you wanna look out for. So there's waterproof, water resistant, you might notice things on websites like suitable for light showers only, um, terms like sealed seams, that is definitely a good one to watch out for, although not 100% necessary, it depends how rainy a day you're going out in. But there's lots of different kind of terminology that you can look out for, so I'm gonna kind of touch on a few of those points whilst I give you guys some brand recommendations. So as you guys know, I live in London and one wardrobe staple of mine in general, regardless of whether it be a rainy day or not, and also I feel like a very quintessential British wardrobe staple as well is the trench coat. And if we're gonna be quite brand specific, it's gonna be Burberry. And there'll be lots of you who are familiar with my vintage Burberry trench coat, which I bought off eBay, I would say a couple of years ago now. I bought that for 75 pounds, which is by far one of my finest secondhand but grand purchases to date. Now this trench coat is over 20 years old, so it's, it's pretty old, it's seen a lot of things, but it was in really good condition. I'm not gonna say immaculate, but it was in really good vintage condition and in the listing when I bought it it said that it had been freshly dry cleaned which is especially when looking for things secondhand it is kind of something that I look out for if the item isn't essentially new with tags and unworn. So this was a pro for me however I have since come to learn that dry cleaning Burberry trench coats and this will also apply to other trench coat brands that have this kind of water resistant coating on top. So a Burberry trench coat is made out of a cotton gabardine. That is what I would say is the quintessential kind of trench coat. It's a cotton gabardine and it has a light spray of a water resistant coating over the top, which means that you can wear your Burberry trench out in I would say like light to medium showers. However, if you have your trench coat dry cleaned, it will start to wear away that water resistant coating. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, most trench coats, I would say the classic trench coat often tends to be that light beige, which of course is going to get dirty. So yes, dry cleaning or cleaning at home will be required at some point or another. I was once told, and I'm pretty sure it was from one of you guys who worked for Burberry, that Burberry do offer a spraying service, and I might have got that terminology completely wrong, but they offer a service where they can kind of top up the water resistancy on your Burberry trench coat. And this is just for Burberry trench coats, if you have one from them. Now, I'm not sure if that is actually factually accurate or not. I'd imagine it's probably quite an expensive process unless you have a relatively new trench coat, in which case, potentially, maybe they might offer that as a free service. But as a more purse friendly option, I have this which is instant protector. Now I'm gonna get onto this a little bit more thoroughly later because this is what I use on shoes and bags. But this is actually also a really good thing to give, um, so it's suitable for fabric, so you could give your coat a little spray with this and that can go for wool coats, cotton coats like trenches, anything like that. So this is a slightly more purse friendly option. Of course, it's not gonna be the most thorough job in the world and you're probably gonna need more than one can to do an entire coat, 
but that's just a little tip from me. Okay, so that's trench coats kind of quickly touched on there. So they are a good option, but for sort of light to mid shower days. And I would say to definitely also carry a umbrella with you as well, because most trench coats don't tend to have a hood. Now I've got some other brand recommendations to give you guys as well. I'm gonna start off with a brand which I think is from Amsterdam. And that is a brand called Kessel. Castle? Castle. Castle, I think it's pronounced. <laughs> As per usual, I have no idea. I think it's pronounced Castle. Now, Castle is definitely not going to be within everyone's budgets. As you can see, the price points are pretty steep. However, if you do have that kind of money to spend on a raincoat, and a raincoat is definitely going to be a staple in your wardrobe if you live in a country where you have an awful lot of wet weather, then they are a really nice, chic, but also very minimal option for a raincoat. So they have a few different styles. The one that particularly stands out to me, and I actually think it's the most affordable out of the majority of their styles, and that is the rubber coat. Now it does come in a couple of colors. They have a really nice rich brown, and then they also have a beigey kind of camel color, which I think is a really good, versatile colour to have. As you can see the style is very minimal, it just has that front closure along the centre of the coat and then it has a really nice size collar and lapel. Now the only thing that I would say about this is that it doesn't have a hood so potentially you might want to team that with a bucket hat which I believe they also sell or alternatively just an umbrella. Now moving on to a more affordable brand but it is another Scandinavian brand and I think it's always good to kind of look at Scandinavian brands because they do have a very rainy climate so you know if anyone's going to make rain attire it's going to be them and they're going to do it properly. So this next brand is called Ilse Jakobsen and they are from Hornback in Denmark. So the price point of this brand is definitely a couple of tiers down from Castle. I think their most expensive coat is £450. Now the thing I like about Ilse Jakobsen is that there are a lot of options and a lot of colour options. So there's a few different styles here for varying kind of budgets. They're all again quite minimal but there are a few different colour options in each of these styles for you know whatever kind of colorways would suit your existing wardrobe and whatever you're most drawn to so if like me you're quite adverse to color and you tend to stick to darker tones and neutral tones there are plenty of blacks navies and even some beige in there for you but there are also some more colorful alternatives as well if you are that way inclined. Right now the next brand is a brand called Reigns and you can actually get a really decent trench coat from them for around about the 95 pounds mark, which is I would say quite a reasonable price for something that's gonna be a decent quality. The last thing you wanna do is buy a really cheap Packamac that has no style and no substance to it because it is one of those items that's gonna be made out of plastic and the last thing you wanna do is just have to bin that because it's broken after only a few wears. So Reigns again has a few different kind of color options. I do find that they're slightly more classic color options. So we've got the dark sort of bottle green, navies, blacks. I don't really find that there tends to be any kind of crazy or wacky prints in there, which is very much my cup of tea. I like things to be as basic as possible. And there's also a few different lengths in there as well. The one thing I would say when it comes to a raincoat is the longer the better, just because then you have more protection when it comes to your outfit underneath. And there's a lot of styles here as well with hoods, which of course is quite a valuable design element to look for in a raincoat. And then finally moving on to some high street options. Now, as I've kind of touched on, there are Scandinavian brands which tend to really excel when they come to creating rain wear and wet weather gear. I'm gonna call it gear, it's not really gear, but you know, slightly more fashion forward and style orientated wet weather wear. And recently I have noticed a few really nice, very basic classic minimal styles from the likes of Arquette and Kos, which leads me on to my own raincoat. So a recent purchase of mine was a coat from Kos. 
and there are many reasons why I bought this coat. It does say on the website that it is only suitable for light showers, but I wore it the other day in what I would class as quite a heavy downpour of rain. Granted, it was only for five minutes, but this coat did me very, very well indeed. So it's a dark gray charcoal kind of color, which works really well with my existing wardrobe. One of the design elements that I really love about this is that it has this kind of cape section which has a hood so it's completely detachable but it's a nice little style element because it ties at the sides which creates a nice little feature and detail. Now I wouldn't necessarily class this coat as a Pacamac because it definitely has a more stylish element to it however for functionality inside it does have a little hoop where you can actually store a pouch which it comes with so you can fold up that coat and essentially turn it into a Pacamac. So if you didn't want to wear it all day and you did want to pop it in the pouch, that's a very travel friendly pouch that will fit in your handbag. Now the zips and seams on this coat, although they aren't sealed in the back, so inside of the coat, I do feel that they're pretty sturdy. So the zip at the front has the flaps which kind of conceal it, so that will prevent any water from seeping through the zip. And I've just personally had no real issues with any of the seams either. But the element I love most about this coat, especially being a tall girl, is the length. What I wanted was to find a stylish but long coat that would protect me against the rain so that I could still go ahead and wear jeans or whatever kind of trousers I wanted to underneath. And this definitely has a decent length to it. The fabric's really lightweight, but it's not so lightweight that it doesn't hang nicely. So it still has a little bit of weight to it so that it drapes nicely and moves quite elegantly as I walk. Right, so those are some of my coat recommendations. I have a couple of things to touch on in terms of coats that are best not to wear in the rain. Now, if you don't already have a raincoat, I know the temptation will very much be there and you have no other choice if you have a wool coat than to wear that. However, just a little word of caution when it comes to wool coats, especially if you have a really expensive one, is that you can actually damage and reduce the life of your wool coat by wearing it in the rain. So there are a few elements that will cause wool to shrink and those are wetness, i.e. rain and heat. And for anyone out there that's ever worn a wool coat out in the rain, what is the first thing you do when you come inside wet? Whether you be coming into your office, your home, a pub or a restaurant, you would normally take off your coat, hang it on the back of your chair or go and hang it near a radiator or a fire or whatever, any kind of heat source. And as I touched on in the how I care for my clothes video, rapid heat when a wool item is wet will cause shrinkage. So if you have worn a wool coat out in the rain, the best thing to actually do is to hang it up, but not near a direct heat source. Just let it dry very gradually. And one more thing is that rain and water and any kind of dampness will also cause wool to have a bit of a nasty smell to it. So if you want to avoid that kind of I want to say wet dog smell is actually very similar to wet dog smell then try to avoid wearing a wool coat out in the rain or at least take a big brolly with you and avoid getting it super super wet. Moving on to footwear and of course I touched on boots and all kinds of different footwear that I would deem sort of my must-haves to have for autumn in last Sunday's video so I'm gonna touch on a few sort of similar items as featured in that video today. The first of which being the rain boot. Now the rain boot, I feel like is actually gonna become a bit of a trend this season. I've already seen a few on Instagram and that is because New Bottega has come out with a, it is a rain boot, but to me, it just looks like the boot version of a croc minus all the little holes. It's not my cup of tea. I'm trying to be really polite about this. It's not my cup of tea at all. If it were a taller version, I probably might kind of warm to it. But these boots are retailing for £465. I don't think they're particularly flattering because they are quite a short ankle boot and they're very wide and clog-like and 
yeah, I just, I personally don't find them visually appealing, but each to their own. I also feel like they don't really have the practicality to them. If you were going to spend £465 on a rain boot, I would want them to be, you know, the most practical rain boot out there. But because they're quite short and they have a very wide opening where your foot goes in, I just feel like they're essentially just going to fill with rain. So... Those for me are not a recommendation. However, if you do like that style, perhaps you can't stretch to £465, there will be plenty of high street um, dupes or affordable alternatives as I call them out there. I know that there is already one in the shop that I no longer shop in, which begins with Z and ends in Ara. If you can crack that code, well done to you. <laughs> So yes, Bottega are definitely going to be one of the key players in turning the rain boot into a trend for the season, but there are a lot of other premium brands as well. If premium brands are your jam, Burberry perhaps is one that is a very classic brand. They bring out rain boots every single year and they tend to have a bit of a range of slightly more out there rain boots which have the plaid print on them to just very classic and minimal rain boots that don't have a lot of branding on them. So if you wanted a more designer option that could be an option for you. Chloe is another brand they've come out with actually quite a stylish rain boot this year and I feel like it has style and functionality to it. If you were looking for a rain boot that has a bit of a heel They've brought out a chunky heeled rain boot that's made entirely out of rubber. There is also a leather version as well, but the rubber one is cheaper. I think it's £345-ish, maybe. And it has a jagged sole, bit of a jagged heel on there as well. It's quite a nice design, especially if you are into your premium brands. But when it comes to my rain boots, I just like to go for essentially a classic Wellington boot. So these are the Hunter boots, which I featured in last Sunday's shoe and boot autumn footwear video. These ones are, I would say, out of all of Hunter's styles, are slightly more fashion forward and a, a perhaps a little bit more of a city option. So Wellington boots very much have a country vibe to them, but these ones I just feel like are a little bit more sleek. So the branding on them is an element that I really like. It's really subtle, it's all completely black, whereas normally they have Hunter written in white. So I like that that's nice and subtle. These have a high gloss and they're also a much slimmer fit. In fact, I think they're called the tall slim, I think it's something like that. So actually the width here across the foot, that is a narrower fit and up the leg as well. And then of course you have the buckle at the top, which you can cinch it in if you even wanted to make it slightly narrower. And for me, just going for a classic black makes them really versatile. I feel like because they have this high gloss on them, they can also be styled with slightly more tailored pieces. So one of my um, tailored wool coats, which I think looks like quite a nice look. Of course, I wouldn't necessarily wear the wool coat if it was raining, but if it had rained and there were lots of puddles on the floor, these are what I would probably pair with the wool coat just as a slightly more convenient and practical option. Now, although having a rain boot is quite a useful piece to have in your wardrobe, especially for wet weather, you don't have to have a rain boot. So these are again another footwear which I featured in a lot of my videos recently because the chunky boot trend is, well, it's a trend for this season. It's a massive trend. But there also is practicality, especially in rainy weather, for big kind of chunky boots like this. So whether they be leather or whether they be a more affordable alternative made out of PU, both are relatively practical for wearing in wet weather. The thing to kind of look out for, these ones here are from Arquette, which I'm sure you guys know by now, but I just always look at the stitching and kind of see how practical the stitching is if you're considering wearing them in wet weather. But obviously one of the bonuses of a big chunky boot like this is that they have a rather hefty rubber sole, which when it comes to kind of walking through puddles and that kind of thing, is very, very practical. And of course, the higher it goes up your leg, again, the more protection you have against the rain. Now, another footwear option for wet weather, especially if you cherish comfort when it comes to your footwear, is of course trainers. So trainers are the kind of thing that I would definitely wear if we were doing a lot of walking on a city break. Simon and I went to Paris a couple of years ago and I wore Gucci loafers 
We walked for miles, I got them wet and they have never looked the same since. They're absolutely ruined. So trainers are a good option. However, there's a few kind of design elements I would go for in a trainer versus things that I would avoid. So first of all, and I will never say this at any other time apart from when it comes to wet weather, but I would avoid canvas trainers. So whether it be Veja or my beloved Converse high tops, canvas is not a practical fabric to wear in the rain. You could potentially get colour transfer if you're wearing denim. It's just not a good idea. They're not going to be waterproof or water resistant in any way, shape or form. So avoid canvas. I would also avoid, if you're then going to go for leather, leather is the better option. If you are going to go for a leather trainer, avoid those styles. And I'm trying to think off the top of my head, any that would have this on. But the perforations, the perforations are great because they give some breathability to the shoe. However, they're just little holes that the rain can seep into and then you're gonna get soggy socks. And no one likes soggy socks. So my kind of ideal trainer for wet weather if I had to advise you guys on one would be something in leather, something that would be a high top. I just feel like something that goes up your leg a little bit higher than sitting around your ankle where water can potentially get in there is gonna be a much better option. So I'm thinking, potentially a converse high top that are made out of leather. There are lots of options and alternatives for those. Converse has a plethora of styles. Believe me, I'm on their website daily. Maybe even something like a Nike blazer. I'm just trying to think if they have the perforated holes. I can't actually remember. But something along those lines, that would be comfortable and it would be the most water resistant kind of style that you could go for. And then finally, things to avoid when it comes to footwear. Of course, I've kind of touched on some elements for each of those different styles. But the number one thing to avoid is suede. <laughs> Never ever wear suede shoes or boots out in the rain. You will ruin them beyond the point of repair or being able to bring them back to life. And it will be, it will be a sad day of mourning for those suede shoes or boots. Okay, moving on to accessories. And I get asked a lot specifically about Judith, who is my low heavy puzzle for those of you who haven't been introduced. I get asked a lot about her water resistancy and if I ever wear her in the rain. I use Judith here, there and everywhere. She's been up mountains in Scotland. She's been on a ski lift. She's been everywhere. Any particular climate you can think of, she's more than likely been there and she is still looking as good as the day she came out of that My Teresa box. So yes, Judith is a very good bag option if you're looking for a practical and versatile bag. I have absolutely no leather spots or stains or anything like that from the rain on Judith. So she gets a thumbs up. I've also been wearing a lot recently, as you would have seen, and I know I keep harping on about it, but my new Celine So Sangle, I've worn that a couple of times in the rain. However, as I mentioned in the review of that bag, it's an open top bag, so rain can get in. So more so than everything, that's not gonna be the most practical bag. Although the leather is sturdy and hardy enough to withstand the rain and the wet elements, inside the bag is not, and you're just gonna ruin the stuff inside your bag, which I think is one of the reasons why Judith is such a good option, because her zip is concealed underneath that top flap, so there's no kind of entry point for the rain to get in, it just runs off the top of the flap. And as I mentioned with shoes, avoid suede. If you have any kind of suede handbags, just don't even go there. If you did have a quite a practical leather handbag, particularly if it's designer or at least expensive and you wanna look after it, I'm gonna go back to this little spray. There's lots of different brands that you can buy. The one that I always used to buy was one called Dasco, but then this one by Punch ended up being a, um, a better deal on Amazon. That's normally what I tend to go by, what's the better deal? And I use this on, as I mentioned earlier, shoes, bags, coats, you name it. I will give anything that I buy a spritz with this, a thorough blast, if you will, just so that it has a little bit more water repellency, if that's even a word. <laughs> now, along with this, there is such a thing as a handbag raincoat. I do not own one. If you own a handbag raincoat, get down in them comments below, because I think we are all curious to know 
how you feel about your handbag raincoat. Do you feel like an absolute numpty when you're going out with a raincoat for your handbag or do you just feel completely normal and sad? <laughs> I personally don't feel like I have a need for a handbag raincoat. Perhaps if I had a Birkin and you know, I had a 15 grand handbag on my arm, maybe I would use a raincoat, but then let's face it, if you've got a Birkin, you're not walking out in the rain, are you? Now, even if you are a handbag premium brand kind of lover, which yes, I'll admit I am, it's always good to have some more practical options. So high street option. I'm quite a big fan of mango bags. This one I had from, I think this was before Christmas. It's got quite a nice sort of slouchy banana shape to it. It's very the row in style. In fact, I think it is a dupe of the row banana. Is it the banana bag? No, it's not called the banana bag. I've forgotten what it's called, but basically the row do a bag that's very similar to this. And this is fake leather, so it's just PU. However, very practical in the rain. So it might be worth just having a high street alternative from a brand like Mango or somewhere that's, you know, relatively affordable. That you can get for under 50, potentially even under 30 pounds, just so that you've got a practical option that's not going to get ruined if you do have a lot of premium brand bags. But again, if you live in a country where you have rain incessantly, it might be a good idea to invest in a more practical bag that is completely waterproof. So going back to those brands that I recommended to you guys earlier, I know Rains has got some quite minimal and nice bags. Castle also has some bags as well, but again, slightly more on the premium price point kind of side. And again, look out for those high street brands, higher ends like Arquette and Kos, because they will also do some kind of slightly more waterproof styles as well. And finally, it wouldn't be a wet weather attire video if I didn't talk about the umbrella, or as us Brits like to call it, the brolly because a brolly is an essential. I have an umbrella myself, that's this one. I have one that I keep in the car just in case I forget or lose this one and then Simon has a brolly as well. I personally think an umbrella is not something you have to spend a lot of money on. However, it is something that I would very carefully choose I am a big fan of reading a review. This was from Amazon. It had amazing reviews and I've had this umbrella now for maybe about two years, I reckon, and it is still going strong. So there are a few design elements that I would look for when considering purchasing your brolly. So this obviously is a slightly more travel convenient handbag size, which you can pop in your handbag, but of course you can get the full standard size, what they call walking umbrellas, which usually tend to have the arched handle. Very nice, very traditional. Not the most practical though. They're the sort of thing which you often would end up leaving in a restaurant or somewhere just because they're so big and cumbersome. So I would always tend to go for something that's not necessarily compact because I feel like the really compact ones just have absolutely no substance to them they are gonna get involved in what I like to call umbrella carnage. Umbrella carnage happens every day, I see it everywhere, and it's where your umbrella turns inside out and just, they're strewn across the streets and it, they just look very sad. You often see them poking out of a bin and yeah, umbrella carnage is something you want to avoid. So you wanna go for something sturdy. So I'm gonna link this one down below in the description box very affordable, under 20 pounds. It's really sturdy. It's got the automatic little um, button thing here so it just pings open. And this one has 12, I forget what the word is, but 12 ribs, ribs or rigs? Ribs, I think it is. 12 ribs, which are the little metal strands which go and hold and allow your brolly to what is this? I have no idea. They allow your brolly to, I was going to say inflate, to expand. Whatever. 12 rigs, ribs, ribs. 12 ribs is what this brolly has and I look for the maximum 
amount of ribs in a brolly just because it makes it a lot more sturdy. That's the point I'm trying to get to. The more ribs you have in your brolly, the more sturdy it will be. Right, all ribs aside, that is it for today's rainy weather video. I hope you found it useful in some way. If you've got any specific products that you've bought that are great for rainy weather, any coats or brands or anything you'd like to recommend, go ahead and whack them down in the comments section below and we can all share our tips and tricks together. But for now, thank you very much for watching me and I will catch you all guys next week. Bye.